So tell me about the technology, how it changed. Well, I know a lot of radio stations are streaming now. Yes. So how yes. does that affect your job in any way? Or oh, like man, it? that has certainly changed. I mentioned to you I'd been here 22 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I came here, radio had just, I mean, let's talk about that part first. Radio had just started using CDs five, six, seven years before. And before mm-hmm. that, it had been records mm-hmm. and what we call carts, which I don't know if you've ever seen an old eight-track tape or something. Yeah. Carts look kind of like eight track tapes. They were more sophisticated in that they ran at a faster speed and had fewer songs on them and all that. And they sounded better. That's the bottom line on that. But uh, we had only been on CDs since the mid 80s. And so when I arrived here, everything was still CD. And and, uh, then the the, the, uh, technology came in to allow us to store music on hard drives. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hard drive spaces increased tremendously at that time. So at first, it wasn't at a, at, as at high a quality at, mm-hmm. as high a quality as it is now, mm-hmm. and over time we stepped up to better and better quality on that kind of thing. Now just about everything we do can be stored on hard drive, and we can edit. We have programs to edit things. If somebody calls in on a phone call and in the middle of it they sneeze or something, well we can chop that part out so you don't put that on the mm-hmm. air. And, or if they say something real foolish or curse or something, we can cut that out. <laughs> you know? And and. Uh, just you know, keep the part we need to put on the air to, to keep the radio station sounding the way it, it's supposed to sound. But yeah, the other things you touched on are just as big a deal. I mean, there's, uh, in other words, we see this stuff, the stuff I just talked about. Mm-hmm. But for you guys, it's you know, is the radio station? Can I pick it up on my phone? Can I pick it up uh, at work on the internet? Or or uh, or uh, you know, is is the station interacting on Facebook? Are are they tweeting me? Do I get texts? You know, uh, and uh, and now increasingly like Instagram and that kind of stuff is part of what a radio station has to do too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, all that stuff's really grown and we have to figure out our way to do those things so that that we, you know, we don't want to seem like we're just trying to pitch ourselves to people all the time. You know, we just, hey, listen to one or two jams more. You know, if we just kept sending that out, it'd be like, what? <laughs> we wouldn't want to hear that. So instead, if we just, let's say that you know, God forbid there had been some bad news last, well, let's say good news, or bad, depending on how you look at it. Let's say uh, we found out last night Chris Brown and Rihanna had secretly gotten married. And I'm hearing they're going to, you know, around New Year's. I'm hearing they're going to get married. We'll see whether that happens or not. But let's say they had gotten married last night. Well, some people would have just the reaction probably I had there a minute ago, bad news. Mm-hmm. Other people would think, oh, good news, they're in love, you know. Different people would look at it different ways, but just about everybody would be interested in reading about it and mm-hmm. learning about it. Mm-hmm. So if we were on our game, we'd be talking about it on the air. We would probably have, we'd try to have some quick little cut with somebody saying, yeah, I'm a good friend. Somebody who's a good friend of Chris Brown talking about it or a friend of Rihanna talking about it or that mm-hmm. one of their friend, uh, attorneys or a manager or somebody. We could put that on and, and uh, maybe we'd have some links to some other things like all hip hop was doing or something like that we could put on the web page and, mm-hmm. and maybe we'd tweet some stuff about it as it was coming off and what the the good part of that of course is it allows us access with the audience at times when they're not listening and background information that's more detailed than we might get into on the air mm-hmm. that's all cool but the bad side from our end is that trying to be in there and do a, your show when you're on the air it requires all your focus Mm-hmm. And so for you to also be tweeting and posting on Facebook and mm-hmm. snapping a couple of pictures for Instagram, uh, Instagram and and, and uh, adding some links and all mm-hmm. that, I mean, it's like all you can do to stay on top of it. Yeah. And and that's that's the big thing that that uh, that makes this a challenge is that managing all that and doing it properly and not making mistakes or or I was watching an interview last night with some guy in the news and and, uh, he was talking about the difficulty at this point in being a public figure. He says, you make one mistake and you're the big news story for four days. Mm -hmm. He says, it used to be you do that kind of thing and a lot of times nobody would even notice. Mm -hmm. No one would know. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, he said, now you just, I mean, one error and you're done, you know, it's, and, you know, this is, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have known what Lindsay Lohan was doing every day 15 years ago. You know? yeah. Not that we want to now, but we do. You know? <laughs> so uh, it's it's just it's much more of the moment now than it ever was before, and it requires a great deal more concentration now than it did in that kind of way. Mm-hmm. Well, from my end, here's the problem with that. Suppose I got talent that can handle all that. That's great, but 
what if they start to sound distracted on the air? Mm -hmm. What if the part that's, in other words, let's say this is all the cake and the icing. Mm -hmm. If on air is the cake, because people listening to the radio, it's either I like the song or I don't. It's either that was funny or that's not. It's either uh, I want to participate in that contest or I don't. It's, oh, I haven't heard this in a while. The, that's the cake. Mm -hmm. And the icing's all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So if the icing starts to rule the day and the cake gets screwed up, uh-oh, now we lost the reason you were ever there to begin with. So it doesn't matter whether we posted well on Facebook mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So keeping that all cooking at the same time is, is a challenge right now. It's opportunity and a challenge. Yeah. Um, so tell me about uh, one of your best experiences and the worst experience you had in your career. Well, at least at 102 Jams, my best experience was uh, was doing Super Jam. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, I had grown up listening to a station in Florida that did concerts uh, each summer. And uh, I was a little kid listening to the station. It was, it was, you know, way away from where I lived, mm -hmm. but I could hear it. It had a strong signal. And uh, I would hear that station, and they'd be talking about these concerts and all the groups that were going to be there and stuff. And it'd be like, you know, six or seven or eight groups or ten groups maybe. And I thought, God, it would be so cool to be. I'm a little kid, you know. It'd be so <laughs> cool to be able to go to that, but I wasn't going to be able to go. It was too far away, plus my parents weren't going to do that. <laughs> So, uh, but I would listen and hear it, and I thought, man, that would be so great to have a radio station and be able to do shows like that. Mm -hmm. So, way back in the middle 90s, uh, a guy named Buster Brown used to be on the station <laughs> doing mornings, and uh, we decided we would do a contest called Buster Brown Bingo, and we started knocking around all kind of ways. We, you know, we developed the contest. You Basically, you get a group of people together and just start talking. Mm -hmm. And we came up with this idea, what if we had a big uh, a big bingo uh, board out on the out on the uh, grass somewhere and he skydived out of a plane and landed on one of the squares and we were giving away the squares on the air and if somebody had won the particular square he landed on, they got ten thousand dollars. So that sounded pretty good. So we had to get the ten thousand dollars first. Mm -hmm. So we pitched that and then we well, where are we gonna do this? So eventually the idea evolved that we'd do a concert over at Barber Park mm -hmm. and he would skydive out and we got a, he'd never skydived before. He was terrified. You know? <laughs> so, yes. so we got a, a uh, we got a professional uh, skydiver who was going to skydive with him in tandem. So he'd be linked up with somebody, nothing could go wrong. Mm -hmm. And and we got all that booked and set up and, uh, and uh, we, got an arrangement with Barber Park for us to be out there and all this kind of thing and, and uh, set it up. And we thought, well, you know, it's pretty neat that he's skydiving out, but why would anybody else want to come watch him skydive and hit a bingo board? You know, it's like, you know, what if only like 20 people came or something? Why would anybody care? There, you know, except the people who have the, the winning uh, squares, nobody else might even want to come. So we thought, you know, why don't we put a few groups out at that thing? And so we got Junior Mafia was yeah. just coming on at the time. The little kid was with them, and and uh, that was just a breaking act. And we got, I can't remember really right now, there were two uh, groups that were real popular and a couple other ones that were kind of up and coming. We got four acts together, and they performed out there mm -hmm. at, at the thing. And uh, everybody really seemed to have a good time, and, and uh, that went real well. But... That was sort of the test case for doing Super Jam. I just I thought, you know, we'll do the acts and we'll see how that part works. And it went real well. So after that, a year later, we actually did the first Super Jam. We made an arrangement with the Coliseum, and we got a guy who, who helped us put the show together and made arrangements with the artists and so forth. And, and, uh, and we did the first Buster Brown Bingo, I mean, the first Super Jam, I guess, in 96, I think was the first year. And... Uh, Oh, it was, it was great. And so I was out at the Coliseum that afternoon. I can travel incognito. Nobody knows who I am. You know? So I can sit out there and watch people and see how they're reacting and see how they're talking about it, which groups they're mentioning. And and uh, then I get to sit out in the audience. I walk out in the audience when the show starts. And when the announcers are introduced, I get to watch the reaction each each mm -hmm. person gets and and see whether what they say gets over or not. It's just it, you know, a little realignment for me to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, it went great. We had uh, we did Junior Mafia again. I think at that first jam, and Bone Thugs and Harmony were there, and mm -hmm. and uh, just some really good groups. And 
and we look back at that, that was a great start for Super Jam. But it, it worked well, and uh, it sold out, and and ended up being a big event. And so we've done it just every year since that time. Yeah. And really, that's been the most. It's it's very stressful doing it mm -hmm. because I mean everything anything could go wrong, you know, mm -hmm. anything, mm -hmm. and and uh, and destroy the whole thing and make us look terrible, you know, and mm -hmm. and you know I mean in the worst case scenario something could happen, some tragedy could happen, you know, it's it's just anything could happen, but uh, it's it's really stressful getting it all put together, but it's a great feeling when it works. Mm -hmm. It's a great feeling when I get to stand back there at the edge of the stage and look out at some point when mm -hmm. the thing's cooking and see everybody standing up and mm -hmm. people with their hands in the air. Mm -hmm. like, oh, man, that's as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. That's it. That's, that's it right there. But, 